fortunately, in drawing lots for this particular speaker's um, uh, turn, um, uh, we've got different people. So now I'd like to call on uh, the Greens candidate, Daniel Wheeler, to talk on, for two minutes only, on small and regional business. What would you, what would you hope to achieve in the area of small and regional business, Daniel? The Greens recognise that small business is the key to the Australian economy. It's the backbone. Small business does the bulk of the heavy lifting. It employs five million people nationally. That's about half the private job sector, and in areas like the Blue Mountains, it's probably significantly more. Small businesses tend to be more innovative than larger businesses, but they often struggle to compete with the market share of large businesses and the power that they have. Small businesses uh, share, uh, sorry, sorry, small businesses bear a disproportionate burden from tax collection at administrative costs. The Greens want to reward the skills and innovation of small business. We've got a strong track record of support for small business in the Senate, but we want to push that reform further. We propose a tax cut of 25% for small business, offset by the government's mining tax. So instead of big business having their corporate tax rate cut from 30% from to 29%, small business gets a tax cut. We want to expand the instant asset write-off from $6,500 to $10,000. This will help small business invest in new equipment and it also has a, a feed-in um, benefit to the economy. We want to cap eg exit fees on loans to small business and we'll legislate so that the banks must offer small businesses fixed interest gap loans. That, that is, the loan will be set at a, a, a specific margin above the lender's costs, so no jacking up the interest rates whenever they feel like it. That way you know where you stand. Reductions in the bank's costs then have to be uh, passed on. Not like the current system where the banks choose whether they'll pass on an interest rate cut from the reserve. We'll push for portable bank accounts so that, if, so that you can move your banking between, business, between banks to take, it, take advantage of greater competition. Sorry, I'm saying you because there's people nodding ma madly at me in the audience. Um, we want to give people real choice in their banking and we want to give the Small Business Commissioner far greater power and a more secure future through real legislation because small businesses need to know that there's legislation that actually has some teeth to look after them. And we want to strengthen competition laws for, fa for a fairer playing field. We don't believe in constantly advantage advantaging the duopolies. For too long, small business has fallen vic victim to these big monopoly sectors. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> to speak on what would you hope to achieve in the area of small and regional business, we now have the Labor candidate, Susan Templeman. Susan. Well, I am a small business person, otherwise known as someone self-employed uh, or working for themselves. We go by all different names, and I think that's what's been missing in some policy decisions, and, and this is a, for over decades and decades, and that is that we're not all proprietary listed companies. Now, Labor has done fabulous things for companies like mine, where you're proprietary listed, where you can have, you can carry over losses. If you have a bad year, you can carry that loss over to the next year. You can write off $6,500 on, on tax. You can buy, ca invest in capital equipment, even vehicles. But that doesn't work for you if you're a sole operator. And a lot of people choose to be a sole operator. So I think that what I would like to see is an even greater engagement with the small business community. But, you know, just saying we're going to give you tax things isn't really what small business needs. Small business thrives when people are in jobs, and that's what Labor does. We keep people in jobs. The NBN will be an absolute transformer for small business. You can see I have a certain amount of passion for it. I can see amazing applications in my own business for it. But small business always also likes really well-educated, well-trained young people coming through or well-trained older people who are retraining coming through. 
And that's why high levels and high standards of, of education are vital from our schools, and it's why our TAFE system is so important for small business. In the mountains, we have the most fantastic TAFE at Wentworth Falls that meets the needs of the community. The same in Richmond, wonderful courses that suit the needs of the small businesses in those areas, and we must fight to maintain those. One of the things that's often talked about is cutting red tape. In fact, the Prime Minister, just before announcing the election, put an offer to Barry O'Farrell to cut duplication of New South Wales and federal government red tape. You know, regulations that are there to protect people, but there was a recognition that there was some duplication and that a single set of papers might be able to be assessed by both levels. Barry O'Farrell rejected that offer. Gee, you've got to wonder why. Could it have been something to do with an election date? So the last thing small business needs is that its people, its customers, its staff and the small business people themselves can get from A to B easily because, you know, travel time costs you money. And that's why I'm proud that Labor invests not just in roads but in public transport. Tony Abbott says he does not believe federal governments should invest in public transport. Well, that's the sort of mentality that's actually going to hurt small business. Thank you, Susan. Our third speaker on the subject of what would you hope to achieve in the area of small and regional business, Louise Marcus. Uh, yeah, can I just point a few facts out, and I think statistics are important. Um, and since Labor was elected, the rate of small business formation has halved. There are now 243,000 fewer people employed in small business and 3,000 fewer employing small businesses compared to 2007. I think that talks about the confidence that small business has in this current Labor government. But can I tell you, the Coalition is committed to small business. I've walked the length and breadth of this electorate talking to small businesses, street uh, shop, shop owners in every street, some of them that were there two years ago are no longer there no longer there. But um, what we promise to do is to move uh, the Small Business Minister into Cabinet. And the Coalition has widely consulted over the last 18 months with business, particularly with regard to how we can reduce the regulatory burden and the red tape by a billion dollars. Now, the reality is that Labor federally since 2007 have introduced 21,000 new pieces of regulation and only have removed less than 200. They promised one in and one out. We recently announced uh, uh, what we would do for small business, particularly with re in relation to deregulation, and uh, these are just some of the points. We would set aside two parliamentary sitting days for repealing legislation that impacted them in a negative way. We would report to Parliament annually on red tape reduction. We'd also create a dedicated unit within each department agency that it was charged with reducing red tape, particularly for small business. And we would require all Cabinet submissions to include a regulatory impact statement and ensuring they, they quantify the cost to business and to the community with any new regulation. The Productivity Commission has estimated that reducing the burden of unnecessarily red tape could generate as much as $12 billion in extra GDP per year. This means more jobs, this means the creation of more wealth by people running their family and small business in our communities and that will enable them to employ more people. Uh, the costs of regulatory burdens means business have to consider do they put that person on for a few extra hours or not? Do they remove someone from their employment or not? These are the questions they have to ask themselves daily and they are so committed to their local employees they do not want to have them lose jobs. Thank you, Louise. 